Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 3 of human resource management course. I hope all of you are doing well. Today we delve into a critical aspect of human resource management that shapes the foundation for success of the organizations and employee satisfaction as well. <coughs> so today we are going to talk about job analysis and job design. These are not merely textual terms, rather they are dynamic processes which influence the very fabric of our work lives. As we embark on this exploration, just visualize every task you perform, every responsibility that is shouldered on you. And you will feel that everything is intricately connected to a broader tapestry that define your role within an organization. So job analysis and job analysis uh, and job design are the important threads of any organization which reveal the intricacies that contribute to the harmony of the organization. Remember. In our first lecture, we talked about orchestra doing a symphony. So imagine you are a conductor, conductor leading an orchestra. Job analysis akin is akin to studying each musician's sheet music. It is about understanding the nuances of each and every instrument. It is about appreciating the role each and every individual play. On the other hand, job design has something to do with orchestrating these diverse elements to create a symphony, so that each note contributes towards the collective melody. So as we walk through this, I will just take you through the contents that we are going to cover in today's lecture. In this lecture, we will talk about the importance of job analysis in human resource management. We will talk about the various methods that can be used for conducting job analysis. We will talk about what job design is and what are the various approaches for optimizing the employee performance. So let us get started. Now, these are the various definitions, in fact some of the definitions which have been given by some HR thinkers and scholars. The first one is by Edwin B. Flippo. He defines job analysis as the process of studying and collecting information related to the operations and responsibility of specific jobs. So it means by means of job analysis, we can collect a lot of information pertaining to the operations and responsibilities of specific jobs associated with the organization. Another definition is by Gary Dessler. He goes on explaining job analysis as a systematic process of gathering, documenting and analyzing information about a job. So it identifies the knowledge, skills, abilities and other characteristics required for the success of job. So apart from this, there are n number of other uh, definitions which have been given by various scholars, thinkers and uh, HR people and by it, it is very clear that job analysis 
is an important task to be taken up in the organization. Now, after this, let us talk about significance of job analysis. Now, why is job analysis important? It is very important for us to understand this. Job analysis has a vital role to play. It plays a very, very crucial role in human resource management in organizations effectiveness due to its multifaceted importance. So, here is an elaboration of the various points and why is job analysis important. Number one, it helps in recruitment and selection of employees. So, job analysis definitely helps the HR professionals understand the required qualifications, skills, knowledge, competencies which are required for a particular job position. This information is definitely very, very important for the organization to create the job description and job specification. By job description, we mean the various duties and responsibilities associated with the job. Whereas, job specification typically talks about the essential qualifications required by an individual to do a particular job. So, definitely job analysis supports recruitment and selection of employees. It assists in creating targeting recruitment strategies. So, by means of it, we can, uh, we can really be helped, the organizations can really be helped for attracting the right kind of candidates who are the best fit for the job positions, reducing the turnover of the organization, uh, I mean reducing the absenteeism, turnover and improving the overall workforce quality. Now, another reason why job analysis is important is facilitation of training and development. Through job analysis, one can really identify the gaps, the skill gaps, the knowledge gaps, the competency gaps which are there in the organization among the employees. This information can have a vital role to play and it is really very instrumental in understanding the gaps first and then addressing those gaps, so that the employee performance is boosted. So, we can definitely the organizations can think on the lines of developing good training programs and development programs specifically tailored to the requirements of the gaps which are existing within the organization. Again, it will be very helpful in increasing the motivation of employees at work and increasing their productivity as well. Then job analysis helps in performance appraisal. So, what is performance appraisal? Performance appraisal is the process of evaluating the performance of an employee with respect to a particular job that he does or set of jobs that he does. So, job analysis definitely uh, provides the foundation for setting the performance standards for the employees. It is with the help of job analysis, we can set the right kind of smart performance standard for the employees and later on, we can check the performance of employees with respect to the standards that have been set. So, if we have clarity in the expectation set for the employees, and also we have uh, set the right kind of performance standards for the employees, certainly this is going to be helpful for the organization. Then is about enhancing the employee satisfaction. So, when it comes to employee satisfaction, I think we need to understand what leads to dissatisfaction at work. If people are ambiguous about their jobs, if they, are, if they do not have their role clarity, the likelihood of employee becoming dissatisfied would be very, very high. 
So it's important for us to understand here that when employees have a clear understanding of their roles, their responsibility and the element of clarity comes into play, then certainly they are likely to feel more engaged and they'll be more committed to work as well. So definitely job analysis gives them that clarity. They get to know about the duties and responsibilities they are supposed to perform as a part of their work and they are also aware of the kind of task they are supposed to take up. So job analysis definitely helps them in understanding their roles better thereby contributing towards more of job satisfaction. Then job satisfaction enhances safety at workplace. As mentioned job analysis is basically about job description and job specification. So when we do a job description it also helps us in understanding and revealing the potential threats that a person may come across or the various hazards and risks that may be associated with a particular job because it's about analyzing the job. It's going, it's like going beyond and understanding the kind of job it is, the roles and responsibilities attached with it, the duties and responsibilities as, uh, as associated with it and of course employee safety is also a very very big concern. So it contributes to reduction of workplace injuries because some kind of proactiveness can be ensured by the organization and employees in order to ensure safety at the workplace and definitely if individuals have a clarity on what their jobs would look like, what would be the roles responsibilities associated with it, uh, if they are aware of the structure of job, if they are aware of uh, you know very well, uh, I mean if they are aware of the well structured jobs that they are supposed to take up and they are aware of the work processes, the efficient work processes also, certainly it will give them a better understanding of their roles and job and the likelihood is that they would end up committing less number of errors. So this was all about significance of job analysis. There can be n number of other uh, ways by means of which you know job analysis uh, can really help organization run in a very smooth and efficient manner. Like for example, it supports the compensation and benefits that need to be given to the employees and uh, moreover it helps in several other ways. Now moving to process of job analysis. Now that we are through with what job analysis is and we have tried to understand the importance of job analysis, I will take you through the various steps involved in the process of job analysis so that we become competent to take up the activities related to job analysis. So job analysis is a very systematic process of gathering the information, documenting the information and analyzing the information related to a particular job within an organization. It is definitely very important for uh, various human resource management activities for like recruitment, selection, training, development, performance management and all other areas. So how do we go about it? What should we do in order to make sure that we have analyzed jo the jobs really well? We will start with the very first step, preparation and planning. So at the first stage, in the first step, we need to identify the purpose and objectives of job analysis. What do we need it for? For example, do we need it for recruitment? Do we need it for training? Do we need it for uh, the job design? So all these things have to be decided in the first place so that we can smoothly move to the second one. So you have to assemble a job analysis team or des designate uh, people with the right kinds of responsibility of collecting the jobs. Job analysis questionnaire may be circulated to them but then that will come into play in a while. Before that it is important for us to understand that we need to first see what are the objectives of conducting the job analysis. 
after that we have to choose the appropriate method for job analysis there can be various methods which can be employed in the subsequent slides we'll be talking about some of the important methods in detail but to name a few the job analysis methods include observation interviews focus groups existing documentation review etc so considering the specific needs of the organization we would go ahead with selecting the right method that may be used for job analysis so after we are through with preparation and planning the next step is selecting the job analysis methods there can be several methods that can be employed to analyze the jobs in the organization like for example we may have observation method we can use interview method we may go for a number of other methods to understand the kind of uh, you know to uh, to choose the job analysis methods so depending upon the specific needs of the organization the nature of complexity involved in the jobs we go on understanding what method would suit us the best after selecting the job analysis method it's important for us to go ahead with data collection so when we talk about data collection there can be various ways of collecting the data by data collection we mean collecting the job related information through various methods for example if we are choosing observation method we may observe the people playing their roles in the organization and we may see how they are documenting the tasks how they are uh, taking up their responsibilities and what kind of work conditions are they actually into so this can be one of the methods for data collection for example if we choose to go for interview method the idea may be to make use of some kind of structured interviews or maybe unstructured interviews or maybe you know semi structured kind of interviews for the individuals so you may choose to go for any of the method which we feel like and definitely in this case the interviews would be taken by the job managers the the matters uh, you know the people who are the experts in the area etc for data collection we may go ahead with uh, some important methods for example questionnaires and surveys there is a tool called as position analysis questionnaire which may be used for collecting the data similarly there can be n number of uh, questionnaires which can be made by the individuals and some of them are readily available also the standardized questionnaires may also be taken to understand the job roles and duties we may go ahead with existing the uh, we may go ahead with reviewing the existing documentations involved we may even promote the individuals to go for some kind of job diaries wherein they request wherein we request the employees to maintain records about their daily activities their responsibilities the tasks which they are taking up the kind of work conditions the kind of problems which they face etc so this is about data collection after we are through with data collection the next step is about analysis of the data so the work doesn't end here the work doesn't end here we are not just interested in collecting the data but we are interested in i mean we have to possibly you know understand the various tasks responsibilities job roles duties etc and after that we'll go ahead with data analysis so when you talk about data analysis when we talk about data analysis it's important to organize the data well and we need to review the collected data so that we are able to identify the common themes that exist some kind of thematic analysis may be done to understand the various common themes and patterns also 
and based on this thematic analysis, understanding the common themes and patterns, one may go ahead with detailed job description. So, this job description is actually the outcome of the data that you analyze and definitely job description has something to do with job duties and job responsibilities. So, these are two things that have to be taken care of job description may job duties and job responsibilities and definitely at this stage only one has to think on the lines of job specifications as well. So, when we talk about job specification what does it include job specification is basically about understanding the qualifications required, the kind of characteristics required to perform a particular job. After we are through with data analysis, the validation has to be done. Now, how will this validation help? So, the job description prepared, the job specification prepared on the basis of the data obtained has to be shared with the job incumbents. And of course, it needs to be sent to the supervisors also. So, there can be multiple parties involved in this process wherein we can get it validated by the experts, we can get it validated by some uh, individuals who are already working in the organizations, the job incumbents and maybe their, their immediate supervisors also. So, they will help us in validating the data better. After validation, the documentation has to begin, wherein some official job analysis reports are normally prepared, clearly outlining the job duties and responsibilities and also the job qualifications. And this documentation has to made has to be done in a very appropriate and a very very proper manner. After documenting the utilization phase comes or the step of utilization comes. So, utilization is about using the job information, job analysis information for various purposes. As we have been talking about n number of areas where job analysis can come into play. For example, recruitment of employees, selection of employees, compensation of employees, training them well, performance management of employees. So, here the effective utilization of the job analysis information will begin and there can be multiple purposes for various reasons why job analysis is called out for. And after utilizing it and understanding the nature of uh, job it can be employed in understanding the kind of role it can be employed in, function it can be employed in, we move on to the stage of continuous review. So, it is very important for us to understand that job analysis is not a mere task. It is essential to periodically review the job uh, you know descriptions and specifications and it is important to ensure that they very well align with the job duties and responsibilities and also they very well align with the strategic goals of the organization. So, I think uh, by now you have a fair understanding of what job analysis really mean and what are the various steps involved in the process of job analysis. So, I will uh, quickly take you through the various steps involved in the process of uh, job analysis which we just now discussed. So, there are various steps involved in it like preparation, planning, understanding what method to go for, what kind of uh, data is actually required, then we go on understanding the data and analyzing the data so that the themes can be identified, the approaches may be devised accordingly. And after that we have to validate the data uh, analyzed, 
by showing it to the incumbents and by showing it to the immediate managers of the people etc. It needs to be documented well in the form of proper job specification and job description. It will be utilized as per the requirements of the organization and finally, we go on with the continuous review of the data obtained and the uh, job analysis because job analysis is not merely a small task that needs to be done. It is something which is of paramount importance and therefore, we need to continuously review it. It does not, uh, it is not a one time process. It is something which has to continue for long, long, long time. Now, this was about uh, process of analysis. Uh, next, we move to methods of job analysis. Now, what are the various methods of job analysis? We will do those things. So, the very first method of job analysis is about observation. For understanding anything, observation can be a fantastic method. It is something which is not only employed in uh, job analysis and other aspects also it is important for us to observe because at times what can be learned about some phenomena through observation cannot be learned by merely asking people. So, it is important for us to understand that this is a method in which the analyst or the observer directly observes the people either by being a part of the group or as a stranger or an outsider without letting people know that he, they are being observed. So, the observer basically does a few things, a couple of things. He focus on, focuses on various activities, he focuses on certain activities which are supposed to be taken up, then he, uh, he sees what kind of tools and techniques are being used by people. He uh, even um, he or she may be interest, interested in understanding the work conditions associated with a particular job the qualifications uh, that the people carry, the kind of skill sets which are required by the individuals etcetera. So, all these things are uh, primarily integral to observing people and figuring out the first hand information and objective information pertaining to jobs. It will also helps in understanding, it will also help in understanding the repetitive tasks that people are taking up and it will also help us in understanding the job in a better fashion. But then there is certainly a disadvantage associated with the observation because it might happen that the observer may be influenced or disrupt the observed behavior. So, this was about observation. Next method which may be followed in context of job analysis is interview method. So, here the person who is responsible for job analysis, he can be a job analyst, he is supposed to conduct some kind of interviews with the incumbents. He may choose to go for structured interviews, usually the nature of uh, interviews is structured in nature. But yes, they can even choose to go for semi structured interviews or unstructured interviews, where in all the questions, especially in structured interviews, all the questions are noted down right in the beginning itself. And the entire process of interview, you know, takes place in a very smooth manner, in a very orderly manner, in a very organized manner. So, job analyst conducts the structured interviews or semi structured or maybe unstructured interviews with the people to gain more and more information related to a particular job. So, there can be various parties which may be involved in it and uh, he may go on conducting the interviews uh, in various manners. Like for example, they may do it with the job incumbents, they may do it with the uh, immediate bosses or supervisors of people then they may go on collecting some information related to the various uh, skills, res responsibilities, knowledge, etcetera, maybe the work environment also. 
So, all these kind of things can be definitely helpful in in-depth exploration of a certain phenomena. So, once an individual finishes with the interview, he is able to explore a lot of facets associated with jobs. Another method which may be picked by the organizations can be questionnaires and surveys. So, questionnaires are questionnaires and surveys. In order to conduct surveys, the questionnaires may be made or may be developed. So, they may choose to make their own questionnaire or they may even go ahead with taking a standardized questionnaire. So, in case they go for standardized questionnaire, the due credit needs to be given to the concerned party and also it needs to be seen that the questionnaire is reliable enough and valid enough in a particular context. Therefore, it is recommended that if one chooses to go for a standardized questionnaire, the reliability and validity aspects have to be clearly seen. So, normally these questionnaires are distributed to the managers, the incumbents, the peers, the colleagues of people and uh, at times it is even given to the subject experts. So, that there is a clear understanding of the job tasks, responsibilities, work conditions, qualifications, skill sets, etcetera. After, I mean, uh, these were three methods, there are n number of other methods also. Like for example, at times what we do is, we even go for a diary method, we prefer to go for diary method, wherein employees themselves are supposed to keep a track of whatever they are doing. So, they maintain a diary, they maintain a log in which they are supposed to document and record all their daily activities, all their routine activities and the kind of challenges they face on day to day basis. So, definitely they are able to, the analysts are able to get a real time record of the job related activities of the individuals and therefore, this method can also be very interesting and very uh, you know insightful for the organizations. Then next method can be existing documentation review. For example, there are n number of training manuals, there are uh, job description and uh, specifications of the individuals which are already documented. So, these existing documentation review can uh, existing documentation review can be done wherein the analyst may just take a look at and review the existing documents of the uh, job analysis. Then these days with the advent of time it has been realized that job analysis is something that can be done using some softwares and tools also. So, organizations are preferring to go for very specialized tools for analyzing the jobs. They are going for uh, some specific tools and softwares to understand the job well and there, there are some uh, you know very, there are sev several uh, uh, softwares which can serve the purpose, there are several uh, you know tools which can help in facilitating the job analysis. So, usually they uh, help in provide preparing some kind of templates, some kind of uh, you know they help in providing some kind of templates, they help in providing some kind of databases and standard procedures for conducting the job analysis. So, there can be a number of uh, such methods which can be used for understanding the jobs. So, I think by now you should know something related to how jobs need to be analyzed and what can be the various methods involved in job analysis. So, job analysis is an important task in the organization and it is irrespective of who is holding the job position. It is about understanding the job duties and responsibilities 
and also the specifications related to the qualifications and characteristics required to do a particular job. So, in nutshell job analysis is all about job description and job specifications. Now, we will talk about some of the important challenges of job analysis. Now, what are these challenges that may be faced uh, that may be faced during job analysis? It is a very systematic process though and very very crucial for uh, bringing the right kind of outcomes at work. However, there are several challenges associated with it. So, addressing these challenge is itself a challenge for the organizations and there are some challenges that we are going to highlight today and we are going to talk about. So, there are several subjective perceptions, biases and interpretations of job incumbents or analyst and it may actually impact the job analysis and therefore, we may say that subjectivity and biases is one of the important challenges of job analysis, but then if we implement the structured data collection procedures, if we provide the right kind of training methods for the analysts, if we have the right kinds of system in place for people to minimize the subjectivity and biasness and we have a more scientific approach towards analyzing the jobs, this particular challenge can be overcome. At times, there can be some kind of resistance from the employee side also. Employees may be resistant to job analysis, they may uh, be fearing the outcomes or the changes that might come as a part of job analysis to their roles. So, they are at times a little skeptical because ch change may be resisted by people. So, one of the ways of overcoming such kind of barrier or uh, challenge can be communicating to people about this kind of analysis and telling them about this very transparently that we are conducting job analysis for the good of the organization and for your good as well. And emphasizing that the goal is to improve the organizational effectiveness at large is something which can really help. Then some jobs may be very complex in nature, it may involve a lot of complexity and accurately uh, you know if you are interested in capturing the information related to the jobs, it may be a very big challenge. So, it is important for us to not just stick to one method, rather to focus on n number of methods or maybe a combination of various methods to understand this. Then as we are aware of the fact that lot of uh, technological advancements have been coming in and they are also you know changing the landscape of business and this can also be a challenge because if you are making use of some kind of outdated methods of job analysis, you will not be able to keep pace with the ever changing role of jobs. So, we need to be aware of the modern tools, techniques, there are so many softwares, there are so many tools, techniques and so many technological interventions which have really uh, taken over and they can really be instrumental in shaping the success of the uh, shaping uh, the you know success of the organization and therefore, this can have a vital role to play. Uh, then the jobs may be you know very cha changing, they are very uh, dynamic in nature, roles can evolve over time, so many new nomenclatures, so many new designations are coming up, the organizations may be finding it a little difficult to cope up with these changes. So, changing job roles can also be one of the major issues. So, it is important for us to periodically uh, do the job analysis review and understand what is needed out of it. At times conducting the job analysis requires time, effort, resources etcetera. So, if we are not able to dedicate all these resources appropriately, it may end up in some kind of chaotic situation and therefore, resource intensiveness is also a very very big concern. Privacy and confidentiality needs to be maintained by the individuals, by the employees during job analysis, so that they do not have to face the consequences of losing the confidentiality. So, emphasizing the benefits of accurate job analysis is a must. 
then we have some cross cultural considerations. These days the organizations have a culture of accommodating the diversity in the workplaces. So, when we have to work with diverse workforces, then the kind of uh, thing which may encounter, I mean we may have to encounter a lot of challenges in order to ensure that the job analysis methods are culturally sensitive. So, again this can be a very big consideration for the organizations. If the job analyst is not properly trained and he does not have expertise to collect the required data, it again can pose a big challenge. And definitely there are some legislative compliances also that need to be taken care of and uh, non you know uh, and any kind of inaccuracy may lead to several repercussions. Therefore, these challenges need to be overcome, need to overcome, need to uh, be overcome and we need to be prepared with the right methods for understanding and analyzing the jobs. So, uh, now that we are through with uh, job analysis, I hope you have been able to understand what job analysis is, what is the significance of job analysis and what are the various challenges in uh, job analysis. Now, we move to the next topic job design. What is job design? So, job design is basically a process of structuring the various tasks and responsibilities in the organization to enhance the satisfaction of employees at work, to ensure that they perform better and also to ensure that the productivity of the organization is enhanced. So, what is job analysis? It is a process of structuring work tasks and responsibilities to enhance satisfaction, performance and productivity. And if the job design is made effective, then organization is certainly able to get many fold benefits in terms of enhanced productivity at work and overall satisfaction in the employee among the employees and also it contributes to the overall employee well being. So, there are various methods which are associated with uh, job design. The idea is to make the job really attractive to the employees, so that they do not feel monotony, monotony at work and they enjoy their tasks also and they are able to find some meaningfulness at work. So, when we talk about job designs, there are different methods that can be employed to structure the job jobs well. The very first method is job enlargement. So, this method is all about expanding the employee's job by adding more tasks and responsibilities. It is seen that when some kind of challenges are, associ are, are associated with work then the job seems to be more gratifying and definitely it involves and definitely it involves a variety of tasks and when you add more variety to the tasks that the individual is currently performing then certainly he starts taking more interest in it. After job enlargement the second method of job design can be job rotation. So, what do you mean by job rotation? Job rotation is a method involving periodical movement of employees from one position to another. For example, an individual is working at a certain job and handling certain tasks at a certain level, then as a part of job rotation, he may be assigned some other set of tasks which are different from that of his job position at a particular point of time. This definitely eliminates some kind of monotony at work, people get gain exposures and uh, definitely they become more competent to take up 
another set of challenges at work. So, it is an effective method for broadening the employee skill set to enhance their knowledge base and also to increase their competence level. However, it may require additional training and development which is certainly good for the development of the employees at large. Then is job simplification. Another method of job design can be job simp simplification. So, what is job simplification? It is a it is also called as work simplification. It is about streamlining complex jobs by breaking them into simpler jobs so that people find more meaning in doing that job and people find it easy to take up the jobs. Highly complex jobs are definitely difficult to take up. So, the idea is to reduce the cognitive and physical burden on the employees and therefore, job simplification can be an excellent task to increase the productivity of the employees at work. Another method of job design can be job crafting. This has started gaining traction in the re recent times and job crafting is a method which empowers employees to proactively shape their jobs, to effectively shape their job roles to align with their strengths, interests and values. It is a relatively modern method of job design. It allows employees to personalize their roles, to create an experience for themselves which potentially makes them more engaging and satisfying. Then at times participation of employees in job design may also help and therefore, they may be involved in decision making associated with the work roles and responsibilities. It is seen that employees, if employees are made a part of the job decision making regarding their job duties and responsibilities, they are able to fulfill their tasks in an efficient manner. Therefore, this kind of method may also work. At times giving little bit of flexibility in the job design can also help. Flexible job design recognizes that the one size fits all does not suit everywhere and does not uh, fit everywhere and therefore, to balance the needs of people, to cope up with the various challenges of people at different stages of life, at different phases of their career and the kind of generations they belong to also may impact their level of satisfaction and therefore, flexibility in job design can really help to a large extent. So, it is important for us to make the jobs more flexible. Looking at the nature of workforce, the way in which they prioritize their needs and the way in which they take up the various kinds of responsibilities, it is important for us to bring about the element of flexibility in job design which may be in terms of diverse kind of uh, job roles that they play and also can be in terms of the balance which they ensure in their lives. And another method in this context could be ergonomics in job design. So, ergonomics is basically something that focuses on designing the jobs to minimize the physical movements and cognitive strains at work. So, this kind of uh, method can also help in reducing the number of movements and making the jobs more powerful and impactful as well. So, organizations may choose the method of their choice or may even think on the lines of using a blend of few methods to make job design for their employees. And as I have been mentioning job design is something that can lead to improved job satisfaction. It can lead to higher performance at work and also increased increases the contribution of employees towards the organizational goals. So, this was about the methods of job design. So, definitely it impacts the organization to a large extent in terms of increased productivity 
reducing the turnover and enhancing the organizational efficiency. If the job roles are going to be more streamlined and according to the employees, then certainly the efficiency can be improved to a large extent. Now, in context of job design, there is an important method or there is an important model which comes into play called as job characteristics model. It is a theoretical framework developed by J. Richard Hackman and Greg Olden in 1970s. So, it is about understanding how certain aspects of job design can influence the employee motivation and improve the satisfaction at work and also their performance. So, these three things are very, very important here. If you have a clear understanding of how certain aspects of uh, job design can impact the uh, satisfaction level of employees, the motivation level of employees and performance of the employees, then certainly we will be able to get better results. The organizations will be able to get better results. Now, this job characteristics model is about understanding how certain aspects can actually impact. And now we are going to discuss some of the core characteristics of job characteristics model. So, these were the five core job characteristics which came out as a result of this job characteristics model. Now, I will take you through each one of them and we will try to understand how can they help. The very first core characteristic is skill variety. This job characteristic refers to the variety of skills and activities which are required for a particular job. So, when the employees have this opportunity to showcase their ta talent, to use a variety of skills and talents in their work, they find it a bit challenging and a little bit of challenge can lead to enhanced motivation at work because this brings down a lot of monotony and they feel accomplished when they take up a particular task. So, adding more skills to a particular job or taking up you know designing a job in such a manner that it involves more than one skill that is there will definitely enhance the experience for the employees. Then is about task identity. So, task identity is basically the extent to which the job involves a whole identifiable piece of work. You may say it is something that reflects whether the employees can see the results of their efforts and understand the impact of their work on the overall task. So, task identity has something to do with understanding that people see their results, how well people see their results, which are basically the outcome of their efforts which they are putting in and how do they understand the impact of that work on the overall task or the project. So, certainly this also gives them sense of satisfaction and this again has a important role to play. The third characteristic of job character, the, the third uh, you know core characteristic is task significance. So, it is something related to perceived performance. How does an employee see his performance or what is the meaningfulness that he attaches? What is the meaning that he attaches to the job? Does he see it as something contributing to the larger min meaningful uh, purpose is something which will be a part of task significance. And certainly it is seen that when employees have more control over their tasks, their decision making, they are more towards the job. So, this tells something about autonomy. So, autonomy refers to 
the kind of freedom that an uh, that an individual has in his job so autonomy has something to do with the freedom that an individual enjoys in the job and also the kind of power he has in decision making so if employees have more control over their tasks they feel more connected to the work and they feel that they are the stakeholder an important stakeholder they tend to experience high level of satisfaction and motivation as a result of it then last characteristic of job characteristic model is feedback it is said that if individuals receive information about their performance and they get some kind of constructive feedback about the outcomes and their performance then certainly it will make them easy to understand it will make them uh, i mean it will make the tasks more easy for them to understand and they'll be they'll be happy taking the constructive feedback and therefore the jobs must include the constructive feedback so according to job characteristics model the presence of these characteristics can definitely lead to certain psychological states for example experienced meaningfulness of work experienced responsibility of work outcomes and knowledge of results also so these things can really prove to be very very beneficial and productive for the sustenance of the organizations in the long run and uh, organizations if are practically applying this job characteristic model can be benefited in several ways with this we come to the end of this lecture and uh, before uh, i conclude i would just like to give you an overview of what has been covered so far so i would like to conclude saying that we have discussed several aspects of job analysis significance of job analysis what are the various steps involved in job analysis and typically after attending to this lecture you would have a fair understanding of the various methods involved in job analysis as well not only this we also discussed several aspects of job design how to design the jobs adequately what can what are the various uh, impacts of job design on organizations and of course we discussed job characteristics model thank you